Teams and SharePoint Framework, let's, let's get started. So the first thing is you have to be on SharePoint Framework 1.8. As of that version, you can actually host the web parts that you built as a team step. Now, if you do that, if you enable that, then what happens is that the tab will be executed in the context of the SharePoint site that is behind a team. So every team that gets created gets a SharePoint site. And what happens is that in that SharePoint, in, or in that SharePoint set, in that context, there will actually be some magic in place that makes sure that you can host or run that web part. Meaning that if you build a web part using the SharePoint framework web part, you can actually expose it as a team step. So it's not a team's application, it's a team's step. And a team step is not a full application in itself. If you want to do more, if you want to achieve different things, then it might make sense to build a actual Teams application. So if you start considering building things, you either have to pick the SharePoint framework generator or the Yo Teams generator. And I think Victor is still in the call. Uh, Victor built the generator for Teams. Really, really awesome tooling. But if you want to build more than just a tab, if you have, want to have full control over the user experience or you want to have full control over your package, then definitely pick the generator for Teams, so Yo Teams. If you want to do a web part, if you want to build something that can serve both as a web part or as a tab, then definitely stick with the SharePoint framework generator because that will allow you to do so. Now, or, the or as a personal application, or as a personal yeah, application, yeah, or as yeah, a personal application. Sorry, I think. <laughs> definitely w works as a personal application as well, but that's still a tap, right? Um, now, the advantages using the SharePoint Framework Generator is that there's no need for you to host anything. So there's nothing you need to worry about it. It's just uh, run the generator, add some code, or whatever you want to add, uh, package your solution, deploy it, and it will work. Done. You're good. Now, within SharePoint Framework, you will have the Teams SDK. So you can actually achieve things where you can check whether you're in Teams. You can show uh, specific messages or show a different set of content based on the location that you're running in. Now, what happens under the covers is when you open a Teams tab, what actually happens is it calls the Teams logon page. So it does a call to the Teams logon page. That Teams logon page actually does a authentication URL generation. So it picks a, a new URL and it redirects you to that authentication URL. There on that uh, authentication URL, uh, there are some things that are happening from the OAuth client. So what happens is it picks up a access token from the Microsoft Teams SDK, then it sets that access token and then redirects you to the final destination, which is actually a modern or classic page where your web part is running. And because it did the authentication part for you, what you will actually get is Teams context as well as that SharePoint context. Now, before we go into too many slides, let's let's go to a demo and let's see what, uh, what actually happens. Now, first things first, Basically, all you need to do is you'll need to run the generator. So yo at Microsoft SharePoint, and that will walk you through the generator. Now, I'm not going to walk through the full generator. The only thing that you'll need to be aware of is if you're running this, then the package you generate has to be a SharePoint online only package. So if you do the version that you can run on SharePoint 2019, so on premises, then you won't be able to generate that Teams package. That, that's not something that will work. Now, I'm not going to wait for this. Uh, I came prepared. I already made a demo. So what I did is I created an empty, um, an empty project. So there's nothing in there. Now, the first thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to run NPM I to install all the stuff that you need. But after that, because it's an empty project, what you get as of SharePoint Framework 1.18 is you actually get two images in the Teams package. Those are two required images if you are creating a Teams manifest, if you're creating new uh, a new Teams package. If you recall from the demo from Rick, you can use the App Studio to generate that, that structure, but you'll need two images. Those images are already there. You can change them if you want, but those are there by default. Now, if you go to your source, what you will see is that you will get a web part, and I generated a My First Teams Hello World sample. And if you go here, what you'll see is 
that there is on line 15, there is something called supported hosts. And in the supported host, by default, it only shows the SharePoint web part. And you can add either the Teams tab or you can add, if you want to add more, um, you can add the Teams personal app. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to do the Teams personal app or the Teams tab, you can add it. And by then, that's all you need to do or all you need to change in the code. After that, all you need to do to get it running or get it deployed is the Gulp bundle uh, with the ship option and a Gulp package solution ship. After that, you will have a SPPKG file, the package, your SharePoint framework package, and you can deploy that and it will work in Teams. Now, um, this, well, it's going to take a few seconds, but once you've done this, what actually needs to happen is you'll need to add it to this location. And if you have a Teams app, if you've done that, you'll need to go to the files. You need to do the sync to Teams. And by that, it will be automatically pushed to the Teams store. So this is going to take a few seconds. There is some delay on it. Now we're not going to wait for it. I'm just going to show you there is already the My First Team step. You can pick whether to add it to a specific team. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to add it to my uh, dev team just to show you what happens. Then it will redirect you to that team. It will show you the configuration page. There's not that much to configure. It explains, OK, this is SharePoint Framework, and it will start setting everything up. Now, I didn't write any code yet. I didn't change anything yet. I just enter my first team step and I can do some uh, configuration. It's a demo web part. I just pulled in the hello world, uh, hello world, demo world, whatever you like. And you can see you can change, you can add configuration. And here you can see some context. Now, if you would go to the code, what we actually did is I put in some demo code. I'm going to zoom out a little bit um minus there we go um as you can see there is some code in here but one of the things that is important is we just want to make sure whether we are running in the correct context so what context are we running and you can see that we're running in the microsoft teams then we're doing the welcome to microsoft teams or we do the welcome to microsoft SharePoint. this is basically all you need to know to get started or get working now to show you that it is really that easy what I did is I downloaded or I pulled in uh, from GitHub, I pulled in all the client side web art samples. So all the samples are on my machine and you can either fill uh, filter by SharePoint framework version. You can just pick one that you liked. And I picked one, I think I picked the directory, uh, directory one. Let's see if we can find it quickly. Directory, uh, that's not the search I was looking for. We're gonna not search for it. Now, if you go to that directory web part, what you'll see is that we have a manifest there as well. And that manifest is slightly bigger. It contains some other components. It some, contains some other information. But here you can see that we have the supported hosts as well. And this one is actually allowed to be used on SharePoint pages. It's for the SharePoint full page. And you can use it as a team step. What I can do is I can just say, OK, I'm going to add it as a Teams personal app and I'm going to run whatever I like to run. In this case, what I need to do is I need to do the go bundle ship. Let me do that. It's going to take a second to load. Then I'm going to do the go package solution and I'm going to sync it to team. So it's going to take me probably a minute maybe to just to get it deployed if everything is working as expected. Demo, demo, demo. Let me quickly and skip this one. Um, yeah, still going to wait for this. Really, really slow demo effect. Oh, well, I'm not going to not going to wait for that. That's going to take too long. I'm going to go to my Explorer because I already pre-populated everything. So let me grab my code. There we go. So within my PMP folder, there should be the uh, web parts. There should be samples. There should be the React directory. There we go. 
React scrolling down, scrolling down, React directory. Now, because I already did a package, I have a solution, I have a React directory, SPPKG file, and what I can do is I can drag and drop it here. It's gonna take a second. I'm gonna make sure that this is available in all sites. I'm gonna click deploy. And once it's there, let me refresh the page. Then here we've got that search directory. I can click on sync to teams. And once you press the button, it's gonna take one, maybe two minutes to show up in teams. Uh, at least if it says successfully sync to teams, if it's not saying successfully uh, sync to teams, it won't show up, but if it's successfully, it will show up in teams. And what you then can do is you can go to all the apps. You can click on more apps. You will get the actual app. It's already here. It's been cached. I'm not sure if I can add it directly now, but because I added it, I, uh, or I changed this web part to uh, be, available both as a personal app as well as a Teams app. I can pick either click add as a personal app or add to team if I want to add it to a team. But let's do add and we go personal app. It's showing the web part, it's showing all persons. And just as a reminder, I didn't write any code. Just I, I just pulled in a GitHub repository. All I did is I changed it to be available and I have a search directory available and well, there are some users in my tenant, not that many, um, but you can see it's really, really easy without too much code. You can just get it to work in your, uh, in your environment. Now, just a final remark. If you are ever in the case that you want to do anything with, uh, with web parts on your machine, um, if you want to do um, a actual Teams application, if you say, okay, I've got a few web parts, I've got a solution, maybe three or four web parts, you can actually generate a Teams manifest and put that Teams manifest into the Team store. So you can use the App Studio to generate that. But if you want to do that, you'll need to be aware of the, the URLs that you need to use. So for static tabs, what you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that there's a content URL and that that content URL that that redirects to the Teams logon, ASPX page. And within that Teams logon, ASPX page, if it's a static tab, you'll need to do the personal, it's highlighted in, in purple, and you'll need to add the component ID where the component ID is the GUID of the application. So your SharePoint framework web part always has a manifest. It has a component ID in there as well. If that matches, then it will work. So you can use this manifest JSON to do static tabs, configurable tabs, and you'll need to make sure that the valid domains are in there as well. If they're not in there, then it won't work. So that way you can actually do this, uh, do this yourself. Now, what's next? If you want to uh, get started yourself, um, there is this really interesting blog post that explains in detail how to integrate within Teams. And there is this really cool sample of building a me experience, where in a me experience you can see several samples where it all comes together. So it's a SharePoint page where you could just show or you can show your organization. It's kind of like a, a pre-processor to the Viva Connections part, but built as a personal, uh, personal application. So really, really cool scenario. And that's it, one minute late, so not too bad, I guess. Not too bad, thank you, Abby, on that one. And just to recap before you stop sharing is that the, really the key power of SPFX here is that nothing was actually required to set up in Azure. This solution is ready to be used in production whereas it's deployed in the app catalog. So everything is automatically hosted. Now, the real thing which we need to remember that SPFX is good on a UX. If you need to create a bot or a backend, then uh, you should be looking into your teams or any other Azure functions, integrations, and all of that. So SharePoint Framework is really for the UX layer for the teams as well. And you'll see more and more investments and, and integration between teams and SPFX also in the future. Thank you.